Let's talk about another service called Amazon S3 Glacier or it is just referred as S3 Glacier. Now if you know about glaciers, this is how it looks like. And if I read the dictionary definition here, it says a slowly moving mass of ice. So one thing it is clear that glacier has something to do with Amazon S3 Glacier. Amazon S3 Glacier is also designed to keep your cold data. It's a storage service optimized for infrequently used data or cold data and it is suitable for data archiving and backup. So in case you want to retain your data for a very long period and then pay less prices on it, then probably the Glacier would be the best service to utilize. Right. Now you could can use this service independently or you could use this with the lifecycle policies of Amazon S3. So you could say I would just store data into Glacier without using Amazon S3 or you could say I would transition my data to Amazon S3 Glacier by lifecycle policies of Amazon S3 service. So it depends on how you want to entertain the data which will go inside Glacier. Now in Glacier the concept is of something called a vault. A vault is a container for storing archive. Archive could be any object which is a document or a video or a photo that you would be storing into a vault. Base unit of your storage is archive and if I compare it with S3, you could relate like in S3 we call that container a bucket. Here it is called vault. In S3 we refer those files and components as objects. Here it is referred as archive and in S3 object size can be maximum up to 5 terabyte but Glacier allows you to have maximum 40 TB as an object size. Now when you want to get started with Glacier independently not with S3, uh, S3 lifecycle policy then you can go ahead and search for the service called S3 Glacier and inside that Glacier service you would be creating something called Vault. So you could go ahead and say, hey, I want to create a vault, give it some name, let's say call it keep for long. I could get some notification coming from it and create a vault. Done. Now, if you see here, I do not have a lot of properties associated with the vault or I do not see a lot of options here. So I create a vault which is possible from command line as well as console like I did. But the rest of the operation which are related to archive like uploading something, downloading, deleting, you would require CLI access or you would be writing code through API you would interact with it. It's not directly giving you an interface where I can upload an object into Glacier. You would need to use CLI or there would be a code which you have to use or write on your own and I am giving you a reference here for Amazon S3 Glacier with CLI. So in this you should be able to see some of the commands which can be used to initiate up archivals and store data inside Glacier survey. So help is there. This is a command line where you could go and get help from it and then you could use some command which is for creating vault. You can copy paste it, replace it with your account ID with the vault name you want to keep it and once it is ready you would prepare some file for uploading. This is a demo file. They are creating a local file on a machine and then uploading it. You could do the same in Windows too and afterwards you would issue a command to upload this file into Glacier. So hopefully this thing is clear and you got a better idea on what is Amazon S3 Glacier. Now within Glacier we again have tier base option or you can call it Glacier classes. So there are three storage classes which has different optimization for access pattern and storage duration. First one here is your Glacier Instant Retrieval. As the name says it can be used for data which I want to keep but I need to instantly retrieve in millisecond, retri millisecond retrieval time. This one would be well suited. This is relatively a new offering from Glacier service. Then there is another class which is S3 Glacier Flexible Retrieval. 
if you request data from this glacier you would this this particular class of glacier you would be needing time of minutes or hours to retrieve that data so you would first initiate a request to get specified data the job would run asynchronously behind the scene and once the data is ready you would be able to access it that is your flexible retrieval minutes to hours of retrieval of data time would be there so probably you won't be using it for services where you need instant retrieval you can still use it but if you are doing that instant retrieval very frequently then it may not be very cost efficient so be little conscious about when to use glacier instant retrieval or flexible the last one which is the cheapest one available to store your data is your glacier deep archive you should look at it cold two time so this is what my glacier deep archive is the lowest cost few dollars for 10000 gb of data and you may have to retrieve data in 12 to 48 hour retrieval day time you would be waiting for that data to get retrieved right so hopefully this thing is clear and now you would also have access to this service summary card where i have listed basic stuff related to amazon s3 glacier like what it is when where it is it is a regional service you would be choosing different storage tiers then you would be creating things for management console and afterward you would be using a job to query archive or get an inventory of vault and then capacity charges will be there for you to pay so that is all about glacier i hope you have learned something new and i'll talk to you into the next lecture thank you